Hi everyone, I'm Jean-Baptiste Tao, uh, Technical Project Manager for Natural Security Alliance. And I'm with Thomas. Thomas, who directed the uh, I'm uh, Thomas Lowadek uh, from uh, UINT. I'm a product uh, line manager. Okay, so today we are going to discuss two main topics. The first one concerns the implementation of our solution. We've been talking about uh, the philosophy and the use cases. Now we're going to talk about what it takes to, to implement uh, such a solution. And the other topic will be about uh, the specifications and the certification process we've been implementing so that when a manufacturer actually develops a product, it can be evaluated so that we can guarantee that it sticks to our um, requirements in terms of uh, security, for example, and interoperability. And well, I mean, all the all the natural security requirements. So the first point is about the implementation. I'll try not to be too technical about it. Uh, so we have two devices. The first one which we call the wireless personal device. It can be either a connected object or a smartphone. Uh, it needs different things. The first thing, which is in red on the, on the, on the picture, is a, a secure element, uh, a place where we can put first the biometric template of the user, and then all the cryptographic um, cryptographic services uh, needed to to work securely. So that's why it's red, it's because it needs to be secure and it's quite important. Um, another thing that is required is sure a way to communicate with uh, the acceptance device. There are different ways to put such a, a communication. We've been talking earlier about Bluetooth, for example. Uh, that's one way. Uh, not the only one, but that's one way to, to implement uh, a mid-range wireless protocol. As said earlier by Romain, uh, one interesting thing about the main range is that you can keep your personal device either in your pocket or in your purse. You don't need to manipulate it to, to make a transaction. Uh, it sure is uh, secure. The, there is a, a secure channel so that even if there is a man-in-the-middle attack, uh, um, the person who will uh, retrieve such um, exchange of data will not be able to do anything with it. And sure, to make it work, we need a power supply for the processing and the, and the transaction. And on the other part, we have the acceptance device, which also needs sure uh, communication interface, service application, also stored in a, in a secure storage, and a verification data entry, which is basically a biometric reader, so that the, the user can uh, can put its its finger and uh, so that this data is retrieved via the secure channel to the personal device and checked inside the secure element. That's the main implementation we've been working on. But it stays quite open. If we have partners uh, needing, for example, the biometric reader on the personal device, well, our specification allow them to do that. And also, if they rest do an NFC or contact communication, well, it's up to them. They can do even if, well, that's not the philosophy on how natural security developed the specification, but it, it remains free for our partners depending on the needs. Um, as we've talked earlier, such implementation can be done in both smartphones or dedicated devices. Both have their uh, pros and cons. Uh, we've talked about that earlier. I don't think I'm going to... I'm going to spend too much time on it. Uh, one weak point, I think, uh, well, I'm an uh, engineer, I'm working on the technical part. One weak point of the sp smartphone, according to me, is that we don't really know most of the time how secured is a smartphone. What is the secure element all about inside uh, a device? 
uh, well, we, we don't have so much information, so it can be a bit tricky to do a smartphone. Uh, one good point about the dedicated device is that we can do what we want, put the security we, we want, put the communication need mean we need, it, it, well, we can do anything we want. So I'm quite pro um, dedicated device, even if I do agree that smartphone is something that you have always on you. It doesn't require an extra uh, device to carry. So, well, it all depends on the implementation, the partner needs, the security needs, and uh, both have their uh, pros and cons. Uh, but well, we've talked about that earlier, so uh, I will now let Thomas um, show one of the natural security implementation he's been working on. Thank you, uh, Jean-Baptiste. Uh, so I'm Thomas uh, from uh, UNT, and uh, we have uh, impl implemented the natural security uh, specification into WeBeMe. WeBeMe uh, stands for Wireless Biometric MicroSD. This is WeBeMe, just to remind you the size of a microSD. As uh, we are, uh, as I'm talking about uh, microSD, just to remind you what is inside a standard uh, microSD. So a microSD is made of plastic, a very thin PCB. It's a, a piece of uh, plastic where you will put your electronic component. You have your SD controller to communicate with the computer, the smartphone, with the device uh, where the uh, microSD is uh, inserted. And then you have the memory for the storage, pictures, video, application, etc. So we be me. Uh, so you are aware of uh, natural security uh, specification. It is about wireless communication. Uh, by wireless, we mean mid-range. It's around uh, two meters. Uh, as uh, Jean-Baptiste said, the idea is to have your personal devices in your pocket, in your bag, etc. The red part uh, that uh, Jean-Baptiste uh, shown uh, previously is about security. So inside WeBeMe, we will have some security function for the match on card to compare the stored template, your fingerprint, and then the one which is read on the biometric reader. And uh, the memory storage as uh, a standard microSD where you can still uh, store your application video, uh, etc. The advantages of the uh, microSD, it is standard. MicroSD is standard for all microSD have different size. Uh, you have uh, SD, micro SD, uh, large SD, uh, but this is standard and this is very portable. You do not need to recharge it because the micro, ID, the micro SD takes the power from your device, your computer, your phone, your smartwatch, etc. And uh, it's easy to use. You just have to insert the microSD into your device. You don't need to install an application. So it's very easy to use. Uh, it can also be used as a standard microSD. And uh, why this format of, uh, of a microSD? Uh, banks want to go to the mobile market for developing payment. Uh, the issues uh, that banks have is where to go when they want to go to the mobile. Do they go to the application? Do they go to the SIM card? Do they go to the OS? Uh, so it's, uh, it's very difficult for them to go to the mobile market. So that's why we have developed the microSD, because banks can sell the microSD and then the microSD can be inserted in almost any phones or Internet of Things devices. So, 
I will talk about WebMe. What is inside WebMe? So you still have the plastic for the micro SD. You still have your uh, PCB. You have still the SD controller to work with computer, phone, etc. And you have the secure element. Secure element is the core part uh, of the security of the uh, natural security uh, specification because inside this secure element you will retrieve your fingerprint template you will also retrieve uh, your payment information in case of you want to make a payment but uh, as uh, Romain said uh, you can have a physical access over application so all these kind of applications will be stored into the secure element. Thanks to the global platform application, we can uh, manage all the, uh, the application. You have a wireless transceiver to communicate with the biometric reader. You have the antenna. And still, the memory to store pictures, video, application, etc. So all of these electronics components is inside this. And this microSD is thinner than one millimeter. Everything is inside this. So we be me how we um, well we, we be, um, you can put it in internet of things or, or personal devices like this one. You can put it in your smartphone like a micro SD, in smartwatch, in a wristband, in everything that, uh, that can manage a micro SD. So WeBeMe doesn't rely on a specific device. You can put this micro SD with my fingerprint template into this one, into Jean Baptiste phone, etc. All my information is stored here. It's very, very important. So it could be, it could be uh, easily uh, swapped, and you do not have to install application onto your smartphone. So it's very easy to use. You just have to plug the micro SD into the device. Okay, during the break, uh, I've made a, a demo. Uh, I can do it uh, again uh, later, but uh, I will explain all the different exchange in a very, very simple way, just for you to understand how it works. So on the upper left, uh, you have the, uh, the POS, the merchant side. On the upper right, you have the biometric reader, and here you have a WBB on the microSD. Micro SD and the key fob. So the merchant uh, type uh, the amount on the request for a payment. So the information is sent to the biometric reader, and this biometric uh, reader send a request to all the natural security uh, devices which are in the range of two three meters. The user is invited to put its fingerprint. It could be a fingerprint, but as I said, uh, as uh, it was said uh, previously, natural security specification is agnostic regarding the kind of biometric. It could be your fingerprint, it could be your iris, your face, etc. So the user, in this case, put its fingerprint onto the biometric reader the biometric information is sent through a secure channel, so this is the natural security specification, to all the devices. It is uh, encrypted and it is very technical uh, for this session, so uh, I, will I will not talk uh, about uh, too technical uh, information or too uh, technical inform uh, security information. Then, the fingerprint picture, which is uh, encrypted, it, so it 
it is sent to all the devices, and then each device is making the match on card. So my template is stored in the secure element. The fingerprint is read from the biometric reader, and it is compared into the secured element. Then, if the match is correct, a new channel is established between the good devices and the biometric reader. And then we can send all your payment information to the biometric reader, who send the information to the POS, who, make, uh, who makes uh, the traditional uh, payment process. And that's it, and okay. uh, I give the micro back to Jean-Baptiste. Yes, um, to finish with, I'd like to talk um, about the natural security environment in terms of specifications and, uh, and evaluation, because um, sure, to, to make a device such as Thomas uh, just talked about, you need, a, you need an environment. So, um, We've made different specifications towards uh, the biometric reader, the devices, uh, so that uh, a vendor can uh, can quite easily uh, implement our solution. And plus, the um, natural security specifications are more like a toolbox, and you can uh, use them uh, depending on your needs. It's not just a, a straight uh, implementation. Um, with a uh, well, which would be closed. It's really, really opened. Um, we also have uh, tools uh, to be sure that the implementation uh, is uh, interoperable and uh, um, is uh, evalu evaluable, and uh, that you have transparency and and uh, that we can check the security. Well, that's the way the the specification have been written. Um, Another point concerns um, the, the different tools. We have test tools, that's quite important to us. We are sticking to um, the payment word uh, tools and specifications in terms of, uh, uh, well, in order to, to, yeah, to stick to the payment uh, requirements uh, so that we're, we're sure we, uh, we can address uh, the, the payment implementation to uh, to the retailers, for example. Uh, retailers are a good example of uh, payment implementation. And sure, uh, all those uh, specs and, uh, and tools are, um, are sticking to, to the natural security philosophy and um, what, uh, what matters to us, which are privacy, no, no database, no tracking, and uh, respect of uh, the personal data. So for the specification, uh, here are examples of what we've been editing. So sure, the personal device specification, the communication between the two devices specification, the acceptance device uh, specification, uh, author specification towards the way to, to transmit data, and uh, well, a more uh, high level specifications so that partners can uh, introduce themselves to the, <coughs> the technology quite easily. Uh, a big point is so the certification ecosystem. We have uh, partners, the list is over there. Uh, some of our partners are certification laboratories, as I said earlier, uh, specialized, in, specialized in payments, uh, payments so that they are used to evaluate uh, cards and uh, point of sales. So that's the, that's the partners we are working with to be sure to, to stick to the payment word requirements. So um, that's it, so that the vendor, the vendor gets um, the specifications and uh, the requirements from natural security. Uh, and goes to the lab to evaluate the product, and the lab is aware of our uh, requirements. And sure, the test plans and test tools we have developed 
um, are um, wide open to cover all the natural security uh, use cases. Um, so, so that's it, and that's up and running. I mean, we've been uh, working uh, with uh, such laboratories for the past few years, and now uh, everything is uh, is up and running. We are, for example, working with uh, Edit, which is a laboratory in France, and uh, UL, which is in the UK. Okay, uh, well, here is to give you examples of uh, some of. Uh, some of our partners and what they do within the, the alliance. So as I said, uh, Elite and UL for the test laboratories, uh, different vendors, uh, Thomas is here. We also have a, a certification body which is PCERT and uh, it's a third party which uh, analyzes the lab results and then send them to Natural Security which uh, approves or not the, um, the product to be compliant with uh, our uh, requirements. And yeah, very, very uh, practically, um, the two main tools we've developed with the labs are the personal device plans and tool and uh, the acceptance device uh, side of plans and tools. So, so as I said, it's up and running. So if today or tomorrow there is a vendor having a product that uh, needs to be evaluated. There's no worry, everything is running. Uh, the plans and tools, all the ecosystems, uh, all the, the process, and uh, and so we we are already ready for a, a wider spread of our of our products. And I think that's about it for me. Do you have any questions? We can do a, a demo uh, if you want, uh, just uh, next to the door. Yeah. And feel free to come back to me if you have any questions. Thanks.